Welcome to our next episode of Fellowship in Essential Oils. Adam and Liz here again. And today, Liz, we're diving into Palo Santo. We are. A really beautiful oil that I did not reveal to you that I do not use. I do not buy. <laughs> but uh, ah. it, is, it is something that I know lots about because I do get asked about it a lot. Um, and I have worked with the wood in the past, but because it's a critically endangered species and because I don't do the kind of sort of psychopomp work and sort of soul pathway work that it's so good for, I decided I'm going to leave that for the people that do do that work. So I've got those things to say, but yeah, if you ask me what I use it for, I'm just going to keep saying I don't <laughs> I warn you that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's one thing I found really, well, probably the biggest thing about Palo Santo that's really quite interesting. It's probably most famed for the wood and burning of the wood. Um, it's from um, South America um, where it grows in dry forest there. But I think the real fascinating thing about this tree is there is oil in the sap wood around the of the outside wood while it's alive and that kind of protects it from insects and bugs and things but where the beauty happens is after the tree dies and then over the years when either a branch falls off or the whole tree falls off and there are you know it can be because of the weather condition the way that the tree dies that's when the oil all starts to soak into that heartwood and becomes really concentrated and that's the the wood that's often burnt ceremonially to clean the space and that type of thing and that's where we get the essential oil from as well so really, in my opinion, it's probably not an oil that's more closely related to death than Palo Santo. Yes, I agree with that. And that's what I mean, really, about it being for for people who are like, I mean, we'll say psychopomps because, of course, we mean not on a spiritual level. But people who are like uh, palliative care nurses, uh, psychiatric nurses, those people that are really working with deep spiritual troubled um spirits souls but also taking on those energy of those people all of the time i don't i don't work with those kinds of people and so therefore i feel like it, it, i shouldn't have that oil there's people who need it more than me yeah you, you did also mention and i think it is very uh, important to say that because to get the oil the tree not only has to grow but then has to grow to its age like a sandalwood or a cedarwood or uh, something like that but then also has to die and actually then have that time for that oil to soak in. That's a long, long process. And there yeah, are some... It's actually you know, some even more intricate than that, as, because it's a bit like what we were talking about with agar wood. It either has to get some mm. parasitic infection or get struck by lightning. Wow. So, I mean, that's really quite rare, isn't it? And so what you'll find is there are a lot of people saying that they're selling Pipe of Palo Santo. They are, it's the right tree, but actually... It hasn't undergone that that death, literally that death. It has to lie on the floor of the forest and be left for two years for it to, for the heart for the oil to come into the heartwood. So a lot of the Palo Santo that's on sale it isn't that stuff. Um, yeah. And likely, it's a lot of money to buy it. Yeah. Now the essential oil it does smell very much like the wood on a kind of a concentrated form of that. I must admit, I don't know. When I was young, we we had big backyards and things like that, and ants were always running around. And ants getting squashed was kind of not something I was a fan of, but it would just happen through, you know, if if you're playing around, they get squashed. And you get that, I don't know if you know, the smell of dead ants. Oh, um, it's acid, isn't it? Yeah. And, and for me, Palo Santo smells slightly like dead ants. Well, that's the selling thing. Are you, expecting that. to, are you expecting to sell many of that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is my way of protecting the tree, I think. <laughs> yeah, okay. so, I would say that it's like lemon, mint, lilac. But it's kind of like a licorice smell over the top. Yeah, well, if, if we're competing for a marketing job, I think you just beat me. So <laughs> They're not yeah. going to buy yours, kid. Not of not no. dead ends. <laughs> no. But I exactly. do know what you say. It's got, it, 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 it definitely smells like, like a transition of something of, of some description very much so and, and i did find it interesting that there are in certain parts of where it is native um that palo santo um has the tree has ants will bore into it live on it fire ants and all that kind of thing so it has a bit of a relationship with ants as well but that's probably just a coincidence in that way 
Now you don't use it much physically. From your from your from the knowledge in your head, how would you recommend people use Palo Santo physically? So physically, uh, wounds, yep. antifungal, aches and pains, and it is a really good insect repellent. Yep. Yeah, and I think a lot of the time they'll also use it um, in, in the region for respiratory infections, yes, sorry, especially that's, that's kind of things. Yeah, yeah, and, so, and that's and that's kind of my, my my feeling about it. Really, if you put it down into like categories like wounds, then you know helichrysum's dead good to use, mers dead good to use, and less less problematic in terms of sustainability respiratory well any of your australian oils fantastic for that frankincense um antifungal geranium clove any of those things are much e more easily got hold of and so i don't see any reason unless you've got a bottle of uh, palo santo on the shelf where you would buy it for physical stuff because really it, it, it has uses but that's not what it's for Exactly. I 100% agree with you. You could use it for that, but why would you? Because there are other oils that probably do it better and, yeah, a, a cheaper, more readily available and that type of thing as well. So I think we really have to kind of merge quick, very deeply into where would we use Palo Santo? And I think it is more in that, that spiritual and that holistic sense. So for you, um, how does Palo Santo sing to you? So traditionally, it's use uh, the the curanderos i think i've said that right uh in peru uh, south america they use the holy stick that's what it means people say holy wood but holy stick to wave into the aura of the patient to dispel negative energy uh, energies negative entities so depending on your belief system you might say well a negative entity might be somebody is possessed or you might say, well, mm, she's quite an empath and she picks up lots of vibrations off other people. You might say, well, mm, she's a nurse. There's lots of people who are really kind of out of their aura because they're in so much pain and that energy has got to go somewhere, picking up that kind of stuff. Anything that kind of moves away from your natural spiritual disposition i think we could say is a negative entity so i know lots of people say oh i feel i use it when i feel a bit a bit down or i just want to mm, mm. <laughs> again you know i have these kind of and and bear in mind i'm not the rule book we, I mean, we say it over and over again you're asking for my opinion i'm talking about my visceral response and my visceral response is when people do that, because I think, oh, I just want to settle down at the end of the night. You've got a whole box worth of stuff. But those people who are really dealing with troubled people, troubled spirits. Um, and, and last week I did two really good interviews with people who were psychopomps with uh, Felic Felicity Warner and um, Joanna Joy. If you want to see the kinds of work that, it's in, that it should be used for, those two videos on my feed last week are, are tremendous examples. You know, those people who are dying, those people who have just died. Joanna has been working with the spirit of somebody who had committed suicide and so their spirit had fractured into a million places and jumped into i'm not going to spoil the story but but people who really did need to be cleared that that palo santo work so obviously with my priestess hat on a priestess works in a liminal space also like death isn't my liminal space that's not where i work you know my liminal space is between body and mind body and emotion not not this not the really advanced soul stuff so the people who are working with like deep soul stuff they're the they're the people that get really good use i think out of palo santo so i think i'd agree with you and i'd summarize it up in basically saying i'd use palo santo to get rid of negative or unwanted energies that are beyond me not within me so if yes. you're in a foul mood get a citrus you know, that kind of thing, yeah. that type of thing. Um, but it's when you feel that there's something around you that is beyond your control, you need a bit of help from the plant kingdom, that's where Palo Santo is an essential. The wood's great, but obviously the essential oil is kind of the concentrate. 
there's also other benefits as well. Like you're not kind of, um, you know, sending smoke around the house and that can irritate lungs and different things like that. You know, that's where Palo Santo would really come into its own in that kind of cleansing out space in that way. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I'm talking from the viewpoint of somebody who has all of those oils behind me. But if you haven't got that many oils and you think, God, I am somebody who really picks up other people's negative stuff, then it it, it probably is a really good oil for for you to use. And, you know, as you say, we're not smudging with smoke a drop in the bath or just a drop maybe on the heart center or or here and we're only using tiny amounts it's a really really strong oil we're looking to bring out a, a, a subtle change but yeah if i mean remember the words transformation means to to change to something further and so mm-hmm. use it beyond yourself exactly right so you know if you think well that, Quite often you'll hear of people talk about when they're having being psychically attacked. That's definitely a thing that happens. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a good good oil to use. Yeah, very much so. I think you you spot on there with the empath as well. What one little bit of trivia that I did notice when I was kind of reading up on Palo Santo um, is that it is used by um, indigenous people to guard their cattle from vampire bats. And yeah. I think is there nothing worse than yeah, energy right. vampires? Um, you know, it works on all types of vampires. So whether they're trying to suck your blood or suck your energy, that would be a context that I think a lot of people often feel a little bit drained by an environment they're in or a person they're with, and we can't always alter that. Maybe it's a workplace or a family member. Palo Santo could be a really great one in that way to help to let that energy go. Yeah, and I think that if you are going to use it, and I'm not saying don't use it, if you are going to use it, it's the kind of oil where you go, I am really quite quite low with this now. I've had all my energy sucked. I mean, vampire was a great, disc, you know, I call them energy hoovers. You know, I've had everything sucked out of me, you know, using it for a week, each night before you go to bed. Fantastic. And then if you're not in those kind of fields where you're exposed to it all the time, put it away for next time. But if you are somebody who, you know, daily has to go into these extreme situations between life and death, then it, it, it's kind of like a, you know, a special, a, a, a portal you should be using all of the time, I think, really. Yeah. Speaking of death as well, I find Palo Santo is a really beautiful one just for helping people to get comfortable with the idea of death, um, not, not normally just the, uh, um, the end of a life, but also maybe sometimes it could be helpful with, you know, the end of a relationship, the end of an era, the end of a job, the end of, you know, when you retire and that, okay, that letting go. I think Palo Santo really helps us to celebrate the full cycle of life. And when we look at, you know, a lot of people all around the world, um, that they, they didn't see death as the end. It was part of the cycle. Um, and I think, you know, Palo Santo allows us to celebrate the bit that in many ways, Western cultures, we kind of go, oh, well, that's the sad bit and the bit that we don't, you know, we, they often say that Western cultures are really bad at celebrating death. Mm-hmm. Um, and I must I must admit that when I go to some funerals and I kind of go, wow, that was half an hour and that's all their life came to. And then we all go and have a couple of drinks and then drive home and that type of thing. And, and it, it's quite interesting that that's how it all gets summed up type of thing. You know, when I look back at the the celebration, where which is the origin of Halloween, which is Samhain, which is that honouring when the veil between the um the, our world and the other worlds is seen to be in its thinnest. This is a great time when we when we look back at those of the past when we feel comfortable with death. On the kind of the pagan calendar, it's actually opposite Beltane, which is the celebration of love and creation and and sex and all the fun stuff kind of thing. And, and there's a time for that each year to kind of go, okay, de- death is okay and, and death is part of life and how can we celebrate that and feel comfortable with it and even plan for it? Um, and I think Palo Santo comes in beautifully around that Samhain, um kind of festival for just allowing us to be okay with letting go of different things in our lives. Yes, and, you know, that kind of psychopomp work is about connecting with spirits and Mm. uh, and by that I mean spirits rather than spirit your own spirit and so you know if you are doing some kind I mean we talk about Samhain you say in Wales we say Samhain we talk about 
how how it is part of the cycle the cycle but also it is the time for connecting with the spirits and obviously we, it's become very westernized now that it's ghosts and ghouls and, and, and pumpkins and stuff but you know pumpkins in terms of the harvest and in terms of the uh, the, the work that came before the ancestry that came before to, to to do that and so when you're doing sort of soul retrieval work and again not not my work but i know enough you know to, to know about it there does need to be like a traveling down the thread to mm. be able to get to the to, to the soul we want to deal with and it's palo santo is very good at, at, at connecting that thread and the funny thing is about that oil actually there are certain plants that i learned to embody when i was mm. training to be I was going to say a midwife. I don't know why I was going to say that then. Whoever you are, go away. I'm not a midwife. <laughs> Training to be a Melissa. Um, and, you know, so actually on the workshop, I taught people how to turn up in the world as lavender. I don't need the oil for Palo Santo. I can just go straight into the energy and embody Palo Santo. And I don't know why I can do that, but I can. You know, mm. I, I can just like smell it, it straight away, can, can, can become that energy. Um, and so, I mean, that, that's quite quite a gift you know, to somebody who goes, I'm not going to use the oil because I actually don't need to. I know to, how to channel that one. But it, it is a, a, a really fantastic oil. And incidentally, there's a, a really great workshop coming up with Felicity Warner, who is a soul midwife, probably what that was telling me. Um, and she also has a book called Sacred Oils. There's a big section uh, about Palo Santo in there if anybody wants to read up on it and she's got case histories and all sorts about how she uses it in her work yes after watching your YouTube video um, a couple of days ago that book is on its way to me now so I'm looking forward to reading that one so yes and, yeah. and I can't wait to do I can't yeah it wasn't it a great interview you should, should definitely watch yeah. it um yeah last week's interviews were both fantastic um but also her workshops coming up as well and I can't I can't wait to do that That'll be brilliant. Would you recommend Palo Santo for someone who is having trouble accepting the, the death of a loved one, either before they pass away or after they pass away? My answer, of course, is going to be no, from my point of view. I wouldn't because I use other oils. Yeah. But actually, feeling the vibration of it, I, I don't even feel that it's right then. And I might be wrong. There's people who know more about this than, than mm. me. But I just thought that that was a, a rose thing. Okay, got you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I would be tempted to. I, I feel with me, Palo Santo really helps me to feel comfortable that we're all going to die. And that sounds really morbid kind of thing. And that kind of. And yes, I'd agree that that's true. But what you asked me wasn't quite that. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Because um, I want to tell a story and I've got to be careful how I tell it. I'm going to be as abstract as I can here. But so, for example, I know of a lady whose child committed suicide. And her answer to that is she wanted to commit suicide. Mm. And so there's a whole story in the middle of that that's about her coming to terms with his death and it's not a it's not really a palo santa story it's so i want to no. move away from that yeah yeah true see, you see the difference? Cy for you, you you threw in rose i'd throw in cyprus i find cyprus to be a really great that, oil yeah, for cyprus, allowing, absolutely. allowing the flow of death so yep. i guess in some instances it might be that kind of okay with the cycle of life you know when we, we normally talk about chakras some way through our chat but Palo Santo, Palo Santo demands for me that it's definitely an earth star chakra. Now, this is a little bit beyond, you know, we've got our seven main chakras. And as people become a bit more aware of more subtle energies around our body, they're starting to identify other energy centers that might be within our body and beyond it. So the earth star chakra is about 30 centimeters below our feet, kind of resonates with a more of a kind of a blood brown kind of color. Um, and whereas our base chakra is about your independent relationship with the earth. Do I feel safe? Do I feel secure? Can I feed myself? Can I pay my bills? That kind of very day-to-day -day safety, very much attached to the adrenal system um, and the nervous system. The, the Earth Star Chakra is how connected do I feel to this planet? 
Do I feel connected to every other human, to every other animal, plant, rock, river, and that type of thing? And I kind of get this real, the earth star chakra for me is very much about that, you know, when we go back to many of the indigenous cultures and the older cultures around the world, they saw, they didn't see themselves as being as separate from this land as maybe the common person does, or, or they weren't as disconnected. And the earth star chakra really helps us to come back to that connection as well and to honor everything that happened. And I look back at tr other traditions where they did honor death as being part of life. Um, and even with, you know, some, some stuff came through last night about offerings and sacrifices and giving back and all that type of thing. I think Palo Santo could really help in that domain. Yeah. Um, yes, I would agree with that. And I'm going to say yes and no to that, actually, because I, I, I completely agree with that. And in my thinking, when we're doing like Melissa work and Melissa meditations, and we're looking to connect with Persephone, the Kore, who is like mm. the, 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 the goddess of the underworld, the queen of the underworld, then you go to Earth Star. Yeah. So, so I would agree with that. But I also think that it's really important to say that it, that it is root chakra, that it, it mm -hmm. is about feeling safe. Um, yeah. And remember that, like, I, I often say this, you know, you can go as deep, as deep, as deep as you want learning about an oil, but usually it's the first thing that you learned is the overarching thing and and so we said negative energies so when you were talking about somebody dies and somebody has feelings about it so maybe we're talking about negative entities is well if somebody's died who i didn't like or i mean actually that that would be some a situation where a wife um her husband dies and she's mourning him but she really didn't like him it was horrible to her then mm. that would be a Palo, a Palo Santo thing rather than, oh, I absolutely loved him and that's passed and what am I going to do without him? Then that feels like a rose thing to, to me. Um, yeah. All of those things are kind of connected to how am I going to survive when this is passed? And the word survive is definitely root, root chakra. Yeah. There was also um, a, there's a group of Indigenous people in South America called the Toba people, and they actually had this kind of beautiful, well, it was a bit of a sad story, again, of, of the origin of the Palo Santo tree. And it was about this, um, this man who was in love with this woman, but she was not interested in him. And even on his death, he, he, you know, he kept on um, trying to be kind to her and give her gifts and all that type of thing, but she just wasn't interested. Total story of unrequited love. And even on his deathbed, he made a request please ask her to come and visit me and just to say goodbye. That's my dying wish. And she still said no. So I don't know whether he was weird or, or, or she was a cow. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but, but in the end, um, he once he passed away, he was turned into the Palo Santo tree so that when he, he was burnt and his smoke was released, he could surround her and protect her. And so for the Toba people, Palo Santo was this um, symbol of total unconditional unrequited love and giving with no expectation of um wanting to receive back and this man who loved this woman for whatever reason um even after death decided to protect her and guide her um in in the spirit realm in the form of the palo santo tree which Isn't is really interesting so so it's really interesting that there is um, and I did notice that although there is probably the main thing, like we said, getting rid of unwanted energies and Palo Santo's main uh, thing, but also making room for good spirits and good things to come in. Oh, yes, that's definitely a thing. That is definitely a thing, yes. To bring, yeah, to, to call on the, uh, the, the beneficent spirits. Yes. yes. So I think Palo Santo is definitely, we're thinking about out with the old, out with the old. And I think that's even one thing to be mindful of whenever we're, you know, doing any kind of spiritual work is, Sometimes we get really focused on what we've got to get rid of. And the universe doesn't really know whether we're, you know, whether we want it or we don't. It's, you know, we, we talked about this in our masterclass, energy flows where attention goes. And so if you're thinking about get rid of the negative, 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 the universe hears negative, 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 and just brings you more of that. So I think Palo Santo could also be a bit of a out with the old, but we've got to, it can beckon in the new. And we might use it and for that and we might combine it with something favorable to bring in something a bit more kind and, and good energy to replace the unwanted. Yeah. And I think, I mean, we haven't said that, but it's a relative of frankincense and mercy, the same sort of uh, 
uh, genus. It's Bursera genus. Obviously, different part of the planet it comes from, but it's a torchwood. So it burns mm. incredibly brightly. Um, and I think that, that that should really be thought about in terms of the like the spiritual aspect of it, it that it is a bright light. You know, the, 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 the darkness moves away from it. Beacon of light, yeah. Another thing I found interesting reading, reading through about Palo Santo as I was kind of studying up for this um, was I found it that it's often used as an offering and, you know, to, to gain favour of, um, of the divine and, and the gods and that type of thing as well. And I think it's really interesting to how we look at this idea of an offering. Is it about giving something away, you know, of, of value? And I know people, Australians, like to travel to Indonesia and you'll often see where, you know, there are off little offerings kind of all weaved together out of um, different native plants. And I put like cigarettes in there and people are like, why would you waste a cigarette on an offering? The gods don't smoke. But I think what's behind it is that that attitude of I'm giving something that I value in order to receive something of greater importance. And I almost feel that Palo Santo, if we were wanting to ask for some something favourable into our lives, a drop of Palo Santo offered saying that I'm willing to give something that's valuable in order to receive something great. It could be quite a powerful um, manifestation tool. Yeah. I'm struggling now because it's so far outside of my, it's so far away from Greece. It's so far away from Egypt. I can't picture, I don't even know the gods that you're offering to, to be able yeah. to, to say that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But so let's translate my knowledge, and I don't know whether it, it take take what's relevant, what's not. So when a priestess gives an offering, she opens a space for the goddess. So priestesses serve goddesses, priests serve god. Not an exact science, but but that's it. So when the offering of incense is given, it's seen that the deity is always patiently waiting that certainly in greece the rules are that a god can, a, a deity cannot interact with um, the mortals unless it is through invitation and so the deity is always seen as patiently waiting for a signal of this intention to interact and so in greece the fragrant smoke because that's what we're talking about with the wood the fragrance the smoke has a specific name and it's eros very similar to eros got an a at the beginning but so and so this idea that they're almost the same thing this loving intention and almost as this as the smoke goes up to the deity it opens it says i so want to be part with you you know and it's this almost like cupid's arrow to the to the to the god to say please i yearn for you um and then the, the deity leans forward and interacts and so hopefully then that brings the favor of the gods so yeah so in a way that is kind of similar isn't it that i, I love my fags so i have a fag <laughs> That's the, you know, that's the, the, the language. But uh, not, it's just not very glamorous, is it, giving it a cigarette? But they do like smoke. <laughs> that's what they do. Yeah, <laughs> very much so, yeah. Now, we, we normally like to kind of wrap up our discussions talking, we've discussed the chakras, but astrology with Palo Santo. Um, Pluto and Scorpio. Yep, I'd agree with that very easily. Yeah, that connection to death. death, isn't it? It's death. Yep, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Would you... Would you, um, there is obviously also the asteroid Proserpina, which is the Roman name of um, the Greek Persephone. Would you, would you give that her a bit of a nod in that astrology? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, that, that's, yeah, it is, it is the realm of the dead, isn't it? Persephone, this is, yeah. you know, so, so when you, when you work with Persephone, she, it, it's about, she's seen as being able to intercede in the dead with the dead on your behalf. So when you were talking about, you know, this, this thread back to the ancestors or these newly departed souls, that's all Persephone's realm. Yeah. But actually so. the other thing that the Persephone's realm is, is enormous, but there is one specific thing that perhaps I would go and buy a bottle of uh, oil for, and that's anorexia. Anorexia okay. is very much a, a Persephone goddess kind of thing. 
yeah. Mm, um, yeah. From from trauma, you know, that is so much a negative energy that's that's within the, um, within the psyche that you need to shift. I think I definitely would uh, get some Palo Santo if I've got a, a patient for that with that. Interesting. Well, I think for both of us, you know, Palo Santo is is a bit of a still a bit of a mystery for us. Um, it's not in either of our inner psych circles, and I'm really really interested to see. Um, as people are either listening to this or watching the video, their comments underneath them, their experiences and how they like to use it. So maybe as a community, we'll all gain some knowledge as well. But I think as just as we don't know really what happens to us after we go and we're all, we will all have different theories and that kind of thing, you know, maybe Palo Santo is, is to remain that kind of bit ethereal and mysterious in that way as well. I think that's I think that's absolutely true. What I will say is obviously from this point, it's I was thinking, well, what am I going to take to the masterclass on this one? Because not using it. So I am going to reveal what I'm going to do in the masterclass. So what I've talked about how it involves in the, the um etheric bodies and the aura. So in the masterclass, I'll talk more about what the aura is and how it responds to shock and trauma and how you can use essential oils to be able to calm that down. So that would apply to, to Palo Santo, but I'll give you some other oils as well that can help you with that. Yeah, I'll also dive into a bit of talk of, you know, from my, my training as well, We I probably wouldn't use Palo Santo as much because I find if you're not lingering around that dark energy, you don't need to get rid of it. So kind of the idea of if you're flying with the eagles instead of scratching with the chickens, there's other oils that actually lift me up to be at a higher vibration. So all this kind of entity stuff that, you know, other people might use Palo Santo for because it's not part of my occupation as a nurse or like you said, anyone who's dealing with that type of trauma, I don't have to deal with that much. So again, Palo Santo isn't one that I need in my toolkit on a daily basis as well. So remember, if you do want to grab your tickets to the masterclass, the details will be below. Grab that. It's a, we, we had our last one last week. Wasn't it fun, Liz? I loved it. And I felt that the girls will tell you who came. I was I felt really poorly and just uh, I thought I got COVID. I hadn't. I don't know what was the matter with me. But um, just we had so much fun. I almost forgot that I felt ill. We just really got involved in so many interesting conversations, I thought. So make sure you're part of it. We are switching the times around a little bit to make it easier for other time zones, but it doesn't matter where you are in the world, um, you'll still get the recording and you get lifetime access to that. So you can go back and watch, um, we dive in deep for each of the oils for about another half hour more and give you some extra content as well. So we'll be looking at Palo Santo and some of our other oils. So next week, we're gonna dive into a different kind of cleansing oil, very different to Palo Santo, tea trees next week. Yes, I do use that one. <laughs> Before we go, actually, I want to say thank you to Amanda for the shout out to say, can you do Palo Santo? So by all means, people, do let us know what oils that you want to do. And uh, yeah, tea tree next week. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you then.